if I'm supposed to create a random number guessing game at the end of this chapter, one of the things I need to be able to do is figure out how to create a random number. Random numbers are useful for a whole lot more than just random number. Guessing games, if you want to place anything or create any sort of random chance item to happen in your game, you're going to need to know how to work with random numbers. Thankfully, they're pretty simple, and understanding how to use random numbers does not involve you learning a whole lot more in the way of new commands. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do in order to work with a random number is import the library that we get random numbers from. Basically, we need to go to the library, so to speak, and grab how to create random numbers. That's easy. It only takes one line of code, and it's called import random. This needs to be one of the first things at the top of your program. You can have other imports up there at the top of your program and maybe comments, but nothing else should really appear before your import statements. We'll do an import when we start working with graphics, and we've already briefly introduced import where I talked about using sine and cosine earlier in chapter one, but I understand if you don't happen to remember that part. The only thing you really need to keep in mind aside from the stuff I've already told you when doing an import for right now, is that you do not want to call your files any name that is the same as what you're importing. If I were to save this file right now as random.py, import random would try to import the file I created rather than the library that already exists for how to work with random numbers. And once you do that, it's impossible to import random numbers and use random numbers until you find that random.py file that you created and delete it on your disk. This is a really common way that I've found that people have messed up their installations, their code is absolutely fine, and they go nuts because their programs don't work. So remember, don't save your files with the file name random.py, math.py, and pygame.py, which will be the graphics library that we import. But that's not until next chapter. This chapter, let's worry about the random numbers. First step, uh, I'm going to do random dot rand range. This is similar to the range function we already used when working with for loops. The code that I've got right here doesn't work perfectly yet. And let me show you what happens. If I go up here underneath run and do run module, go ahead and save it, nothing prints. I'm missing two things in order to get this to print. First off, when this is creating a random number, it's creating a random number and it is dropping it. I'm not doing anything with the value. If you have a function like rand range that returns a value, you need to do something with it. Before I go any further, let me show you what part of this is actually the function. This right here, before the dot, you'll note the random, this is a library. It happens to be the same up here. So I'm basically telling the computer go to the random library and use the rand range function. So this is the library. This is the function name. And here are the parameters for that function. So this returns a random number such as perhaps it creates a 20 and I don't do anything with it. It never prints, it never gets stored. That's my problem. How do I store a value that's coming back from a function? And I'm not really sure why, but a lot of times when I ask students, they really draw a blank when they start hitting this question. And the answer is really simple. If you've got a function that's returning a value and you need to store it, you just use a variable. So all you need to do is say my number equals random dot rand range. And then the random number will be stored in the my number variable. So as long as this right here takes the form of a variable that can hold something, then you are going to take the result of this and store it in here. Now, this will not print anything when I run it. I still haven't got a program that prints me a random number. The reason why I need a print statement if I'm going to print it, so if I want to print my number, all I need is a print statement. Now when I save and run, you can see down here I got a random number. Oop, I got the same random number. There we go, there's something different. 
Now you know right now I'm not going up to the run menu. If you note underneath the run menu there is a run module and then an F5. You can run a program really quickly just by hitting the F5 key when you've got this window up. So if I hit F5 right now it runs a program. If I hit F5 right now again it won't run the program. The reason being this window right here is active and not this window and this window doesn't have an F5 that actually does anything useful. So I would have to activate this window again. But it can be a little bit quicker if you want to run a program several times to hit the F5 key. I've got it printing random numbers but something that really hasn't become obvious yet is just like with the range function I am not generating numbers from 1 to 50. I'm generating numbers just like the range function from 1 to, <laughs> again, not 50, but I'm generating random numbers from 1 to 49. So I'm generating 50 different possibilities, but they're numbered 0 to 49 and not 1 to 50. What if I do want 1 to 50? Well, just like the ra range function, just like the range function, we need to modify our program just a little bit, add another parameter in here, and do 1 to 51. If I have this instead, I will get a random number from 1 up to, but not including 51, so 1 to 50. It's a really easy mistake to make, and since it's random, it might not show up the first several times that you actually tie your program to realize that it's not generating the random numbers that you think. Another possibility for random numbers that you could do is you could actually create steps. So, for instance, 1, 110, 10 will give me random numbers at an interval of 10. If I run this, I'm not actually going to get them at even 10 values. Watch when I run it. I get 11, not like 10. Why do I get 11? And that is because my starting point right here is 1. So it gives me the random numbers at intervals of 10 starting at 1, not 0. If instead I wanted to fix that and get them at even items of 10. I can put a 0 here, so this will give me 0, 10, up to 100, but not including 110. And you can see here I get 90, 70, there you go. Another type of random choice you can make is you can create a list. We'll talk a lot more about lists later, but I just want to mention this as long as we're talking about random numbers and you can have rock, paper, and scissors in your list. Note that the list has square brackets around here and double quotes because these are strings. I have a list of rock, paper, and scissors. I can, instead of rand range, do a command called choice and give it my list. And what return is, is no longer going to be a number, it's going to be an item out of that list. So I'm going to say my item instead. Because I like my variable names to make sense. Now, when I run this program, I'm going to get rock, paper, paper, scissors. So we're going to randomly pick out of these items rock, paper, or scissors if you use the choice command. Now, I realize the whole square brackets thing with the commas is new as far as lists go, and I don't expect you to fully understand that until we hit lists, but just in case you need to pick a random item out of a list, I want you to know that you can come here for a code example and then perhaps refer a little bit forward to the whole items, to the whole working with lists chapter. Now, what if you don't want a integer? Everything we've done so far shows you how to create an integer or a simple item out of a list. What if you need a random floating point number? If you want a random floating point number, that does work a little bit differently. Instead of the rand range, we're going to create my number and set it equal to random, and we're going to use the random function. Yes, this is a little bit confusing, but what we want here 
is out of the random library a function called random. Random does not take any parameters and what it does is return a random number from 0 to 1 but it's a floating point random number. Let me go ahead and run this and then you can get an idea of what I mean by that. So you can see down here how we are getting not just simple integer values, but instead we're getting floating point values, that is something with a decimal, not an even integer value, between 0 and 1. What if you don't want it between 0 and 1? Well, then you have to do it old school because this is, <laughs> I call it old school because this is the only type of random number we used to get. We didn't have anything fancy like a rand range. To do it old school, you need to multiply it by the essentially the range of what function you want and add what you want the bottom value to be. This will give me a random number from starting at 1 and this is the range so it'll have a total of up to 10 in order to work it. So you consider we're basically multiplying this times 10, adding 1 and when we're done with that I'm getting my random numbers from 1 to 10. But they're not even integers, they're actually a floating point number.